In this section, we will see how to make our Ionic app interact with Salesforce. There are many ways to talk to Salesforce from our app, like using um, remote actions, remote objects, etc. But in this case, we are going to use a library called RemoteTK, which you can find from here. And that happens to use remote actions internally to perform CRUD operations. Specifically, remote TK consists of two files. So one of them is this remote TK controller dot class. This is an Apex class that runs in the server. And then this remote TK dot component. This happens to be a JavaScript library that gets injected into the browser, talks to the remote TK controller to perform CRUD operations. One neat thing about this remote TK client is that it provides very clean and simple APIs to perform all sorts of CRUD operations like create, you know, retrieve, upsert, update, and also perform SQL queries, query API, and search API to perform SOSL search. Okay, let's copy each one of these files into our org. First up, let's copy the class file. Uh, click here, click on the raw, copy it. Go to Apex Classes section here and paste it and save it. Okay, so now we have remote TK controller. Let's repeat the same thing for our remote TK component. Click on raw, copy it and go to components next let's add our component to our index.html file which is this and save it uh, notice that our remote area component also has a dependency of jquery so i'm also importing jquery library next uh, let's go to our services file and make changes to this friend service. Let's actually talk to Salesforce and return contacts as though they are quote unquote friends. And to save time, I'm going to copy paste uh, all the changes that, that are necessary. And then I'll walk you through the code. Okay, here are the changes. First up, we are getting remote TK client. And then we also have a private function called query. This internally calls remote TK client's query API and returns AngularJS promise. And if you're wondering how promises work, promises are simply a way to say something immediately. In this case, we are returning a promise and then keep up the promise. So again, in this case, when the remote TK client's response comes back, we will either do resolve or fail and keep up our promise. So the main advantage of using promises, our controller code will be a lot simpler and cleaner. And then if you, if you scroll down here, you can see it's still exposing a couple of APIs. So the first one is exactly the same as we had earlier, but it actually makes call to our Salesforce. And similarly, the get function, the get function takes a friend ID. This is used by the detail controller and it simply goes through the friends list, which we had cached earlier and returns the friend so that the detail view can show contact name. And let's look at the controllers here. And because we are doing a lot of heavy lifting in our service and using promises, etc., the controller's code is relatively simple and straightforward. And as you can see, our friend's controller is now calling the same all API, but since it returns a promise, it is now listening to the result inside the promises then API. Now let's take a look at uh, some of the changes I had to make in our views. First up, in our friends.html, all I had to change was to capitalize the I here, I of the ID, and similarly the letter N for of the name, because that's how the, our Salesforce returns them. And I had to make the same change in our details view as well. Okay, let's run the app. Click on the preview link and then it is showing the dashboard tab but if i click on the friends tab it now shows me a list of contacts as friends and similarly if i open up details view shows the contacts name 
and that brings us to the end of this session just to summarize in this session you saw how to use remote key library and how to make our ionic app interact with salesforce next up we'll see how to run this same app inside salesforce one mobile app